they lived in a location of Laodicea. Laodicea was a wealthy city. La- Laodicea, Laodicea, it was this. Co- it, it had this culture that was all about the bag. Young folk know what I'm talking about. Yeah, see this land of sin culture, it, it says you got to use what you got to get what you want. See, this land, this sin culture, this culture that they lived in, this culture they lived in, they, they said like the OJs for the love of money. People steal from their mother. For the love of money. People rob their own brother. For, for the love of money. People will lie and cheat for, for the love of money. They don't care who they hurt and beat. For the love of money, a woman will sell her precious body. Call it lean, mean, green. Y'all act like y'all don't know the song. <laughs> you try to sit like y'all don't know what this. But this is, the, this is the culture that they lived in. They lived in a culture that had riches but no righteousness. They, they, they was living in this culture that had gold but no God. They had jewelry but no Jesus. They had big barns but they weren't born again. And saints, can I tell you, I've been trying to tell y'all this for so many times. Listen, can I tell you something? Can I tell you? Three things happen when you hang around somebody long enough. Either you're going to influence them. Either they're going to influence you. But the other thing is, there's going to be a separation. Either you're going to influence them and stay around them. Either they're going to influence you and you still hang around. Or if y'all ain't got nothing in common, y'all just going to separate. And so this church here in Laodicea, they had to make a choice. These believers had to make a choice. Either we're going to submit to this sinful culture, either we're going to change the culture with Christ, or we're going to stand on our salvation in separation from the culture. Because, beloved, I need you to understand, you can't be if, you can't be back and forth. You can't be for the culture and then you can't be for the culture and try to be for Christ. Because, see, listen, you either going to walk the straight and narrow path with Christ or you're going to run the road of destruction with the devil. These believers... Like you and I, these believers, they had to make a choice. Either we're going to serve God or we're going to serve well. Come on, y'all remember what Jesus said? What? He said, you can't serve two masters because you're going to either hate one or love the other. you either going to devote to one or despise the other. He says, you cannot serve Two masters. You can't serve God and money. Why? Come on, D. Let's help. I'm trying to teach them something today. <laughs> Why? Because those who want to be rich fall into temptation. Those who want to be rich are trapped by many senseless and harmless desires. Y'all, y'all probably done told this out your Bible. But he says, for the love of money is the root of all kind of evil. And can I tell you, you ain't playing the lottery because you like to play f- f- fun. You, you don't like, you ain't scratching off scratch-offs because you're doing it for fun. You, you ain't pulling ball tickets because you're doing it for fun. No, you're doing it because you're trying to get rich. And he said, those who are eager to be rich will wander away from the faith. Here we got these believers in church, these believers in Laodicea. They had to make a choice, and guess what they chose? They chose to hate God and love wealth. 
they, these believers right here in, in Laodicea, they chose to devote to wealth and despise God. They, they chose riches over righteousness. Because remember, y'all, remember the context. Jesus, he's critiquing, he's correcting, not the unsaved, but the saved. It was the belief, it was the church who put wealth over worship. Come on, give me your minds. Wake up, give me your mind. Y'all, y'all do remember when Jesus went to Jerusalem. And he found them selling in the sanctuary. Because they was concerned about taking up money instead of giving out mercy. The church was so concerned about buildings and budgets instead of being a blessing to somebody else. And so Jesus went in there. He didn't go in there playing. He didn't go in there all happy. He didn't go in there. He said he flipped over the table and said, stop making my father's house. Marketplace. It was believers, y'all. It was the believer. It was the church who said, Jesus, go outside. It was the believers who said in their heart, Jesus, we don't want you in here no more. Come on, y'all remember what Jesus said. Jesus said, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. It was the church, it was these believers who put Jesus on the outside of their conscience with compromise. Come on, y'all, I know you're about to go to sleep, but look what he said. He said, I know your works. He said, you're neither cold nor you're hot. In other words, he's saying to these believers, either you got faith or you're going to doubt. Come on, James. James says, if you're asking faith, if you're doing anything in faith, he says what? Never doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea. Just toss to and fro. You don't know which way you're going. He says, for the doubter has a double mind. And the doubter is unstable in their way. It was these believers, it was this church, y'all, they put Jesus outside of their conscience with compromise and doubt. Look what he told them. He said, I know your works. And you are neither cold nor hot. You, you don't know what you want to believe. Because I tell you, saints, either we're going to believe in heaven and hell or not. Either we're going to believe that Jesus was a brown-skinned Jew from Nazareth or not. Either, either we're going to believe that Jesus was God in the flesh or not. Either, you, either we're going to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead or not. But he tell these believers, you don't know what you want to believe. Because he's talking to those who once had faith. <laughs> and so they put Jesus outside. Because of compromise and doubt. Because saints, I mean, you. he said, listen, he said, listen, either you're going to believe in the scriptures or not. You got folks folk sitting up in church. I don't know if the Bible real or not. You got folks sitting up in church talking about, I don't know if Jesus real or not. He said, I wish you was either cold or hot. I mean, either you're going to believe that in the beginning God took out of nothing and made something or not. Either we're going to believe the wages of sin is death 
or not. Either we're gonna believe, either we're gonna walk by faith or not. Because the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. It was believers who put Jesus outside. God Almighty. It was the church who put Jesus outside. There's many churches right now, and Jesus is standing at the back door. I wish I it, It's a lot of churches right now. Jesus is saying, I want to come in your church. But many folk in church have not put Jesus outside. He said, I wish he was either cold or hot. But because you have a form of godliness and deny the power thereof, because you're chasing out the worldly wealth and not God's glory, because you put Jesus on the outside of your mind and your heart, Jesus said, because you're lukewarm, He said, because you are lukewarm, he's talking to believers. Jesus said, because you don't know if you're cold or hot, you keep bouncing back and forth. Well, I believe or I don't believe. I believe. Or I don't know what the Bible says. I don't know if, I don't know what the preacher says. I don't know what church is real. I, you just back and forth. Don't know what you're going to He said, either you're going to be cold or you're going to be hot. He said, I need you to choose one because you're making me sick. He said, I'm going to spit you out my mouth. Y'all know that word spit means, that word spit means the vomit. It means to throw up. The church had got so sick to Jesus inside that he wanted to vomit them up. He got so sick with them that he, that word spit means to reject with extreme disgust. These believers had made Jesus so sick because they was wavering in their faith. He says, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. Well, come on, why did Jesus feel this way? Why did he feel this way, Sister Thompson? Why did he feel this way about these believers? Because he said, you say. You say, I'm rich. It was the believers who said, listen, I got everything, God. I don't need you. I'm riding good. Eating good in the neighborhood. Go, can go to the bank whenever I get ready. Paying my bills on time. Go get my hair did when I want to. Go get my nails did when I want to. Go out of town when I want to. I'm rich. I, I, I don't need you for nothing, God. Y'all see the attitude that they developed in their heart and mind? They said, God, I don't need nothing. They were saying, Lord, I don't need to stretch my hands to thee in prayer. Lord, I don't need you every hour. Lord, I'm not chasing after you more and more. Lord, I don't need you to hear my humble cry. Listen to their attitude, y'all. This is the church, the body of believers, the one who God saved, and look at their attitude. Lord, I don't need you anymore. I'm good. But Jesus said, you don't even realize. 
And saints, I need to tell you something right there. That's a sad position to know, think you got it going on with the Lord and you don't. These folks thought they had it going on with the Lord. They thought that everything was all right with the Lord. But the Lord said, no, you don't realize. You wretched, poor, and you're blind. He, he wasn't sad. This isn't sad. It was, Jesus wasn't sad because of this. He got sick of it. Lord have mercy. Y'all, mind y'all now, I had to put this together. He said, I'm not, I, he said, son, I ain't sad about my church. I ain't sad about it. I'm sick of it. Help us, Lord. He got sick with these believers. He got sick with this church. Why? Come on, D. Because he told them, do not say to yourself, my power and my might of my own hands got me this wealth. You got Negroes in church right now talking about I got my wealth. I got to where I am. I pulled myself up by my bootstraps. I'm the one who made it. But he said, no, no, don't you forget it was the Lord that gave you power. What makes Jesus sick, y'all, what makes him sick is when believers, when believers are not content well, whatever state we're in, it was Christians who were complaining all last week. Like the Lord can't provide. It was church folk who were complaining all last week. God and, and we are never satisfied. Can I tell you, that makes him sick on his stomach. What made Christ sick is when we, when we believers will we'll gamble and not tithe. Talking about if I hit, I'm going to give some money to the church. Some of y'all can't even look up at me because you done said it. <laughs> I, I keep going. I, I keep going. But y'all, that makes Christ sick when you'll go gamble your money instead of put trust in God through your tithes and your offerings. That makes him sick on his stomach with his believers. It makes him want to vomit. It was these believers in Laodicea. It was these believers who said in their heart and in their mind that we're going to chase after the wealth of the word instead of the world instead of the word of God. I'm talking about the word of God that said the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. I'm talking about the word that says trust in the Lord with all of thine heart lean not to thine own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I'm talking about that word that says I've been young and now I'm old but yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. I'm talking about that word that says seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. I'm talking about his word that said, but my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. I'm talking about the word that said, whatever you pray, believe it. He said, I will. They decided to choose the wealth of the world instead of the word of God. And so because they chose the wealth of the world and they didn't choose his word, listen to what he said. You make me sick. 
Come on, Deke. It says you're neither cold nor hot. You make me sick. You, you want to trust me today, but then you don't know who I am tomorrow. You make me sick. Because you say, I'm rich. I got it going on. I'm prospering in the world. Lord, I don't need you for nothing. Jesus said, you just don't realize. You blind and naked. Saints, we put Jesus outside. Our heart and our mind, when we depend on the world's wealth, Listen, you put Jesus on the outside when you depend on your self-righteousness. You put Jesus on the outside when you depend on your career instead of Christ, when you depend on the government instead of God, when you depend on your credit score. They said, Jesus, I don't need you no more. But y'all, come on, look at Jesus. Now, he could have just spit them out of his mouth. I'm sick of y'all. I'm sick of y'all treating me this way. I'm sick of y'all. But Gary Nell, here, 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 here Jesus go again, showing his love and compassion. Here he go again, showing his restoration. Look what he said. Y'all, let me give you some advice. <laughs> he said, he said, I counsel you to buy from me gold. Now, now, let me help you now. Let me help you. Because somebody's saying, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I got to buy this restoration from God? No. That, that's why to my, my students, my Bible study students and all my, all my teachers, that's why word study is important. Because that word buy there is figurative for obtain. And what he was saying was, he was saying, I want you to obtain from me what money can't buy. I wish I had more help right there, Trina. I, I'm trying to tell you, Jesus said, I got something that money can't buy. He said, I got something that'll make you show enough rich. He said, I got something that'll cover you. And so your shame won't be naked. He said, I got something that'll cover you and what is it? It's redemption because <laughs> I need to tell you saints redemption with God is the only thing that can make you rich. It's redemption with Christ the only thing that can cover your sin and shame it's redemption with Christ is the only thing that can restore your eyesight. We once was blind but now we can see Christ said I got some money that can't buy my redemption. But then, come on, y'all. I'm trying to get out of here. But then he comes around and says, I reprove and I discipline those Have you ever been disciplined by the Lord? I know you ain't going to answer, but H have you ever been disciplined by the Lord? Have the Lord ever had to come along, that word reprove mean to convict you? You was doing something, you was doing something, and you said, ooh, I know I ain't supposed to be doing this. You're sitting up on the phone talking about somebody, you know you I'm just trying to tell you that that's the love of God. He's trying to correct you. Because, see, the love of Christ, it always comes along and it convicts. It always comes along and it corrects. And the, word, and the love of Christ is always trying to turn you back to do what is right. So he says to his believers, so Thompson, he says, listen. Come on, D. He told his church, listen. 
He's saying to the believers, listen. He, he's saying to those who've already been born again, listen. I'm standing at the door knocking. Why? Because you put me out. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's saying to his church, he's saying to believers, even though you have compromised and doubt, listen, even though you have chose worldly wealth over the word of God, even though you have made me sick with your self-righteousness, even though you have put me outside, he said, I'm still standing here knocking. Y'all should have got more happy right there because all of us have put Christ outside at some point. Don't look up here and be funny. All of us have put him outside at some point. If you haven't, you're going to. He said, but listen, even though you put me outside, even though you make me sick, I'm still standing at the door. And I'm knocking. <laughs> he says, even though I once was in, but now I'm out. Christ said, even though, even though you no longer wanted to enjoy, say, in order for you to put somebody out, that means you didn't enjoy that fellowship. Y'all better hear what I'm saying here this morning. In order for you to put somebody outside, that means you don't want to be a fellowship with them anymore. Christ said, even though you chose riches over righteousness, he said, listen, I'm still knocking at your door. But then watch the condition. He said, if you hear my voice. Go back, Dick. He said, if you hear my voice, that voice that says, come now, let's reason together. That voice that says, come unto me, all you that labor and heaven laying, and I will give you rest. That voice that said, if we confess our sins, God is faithful to forgive us of our sins. He said, listen, church. You put me outside of your life. You put me outside your church, but I'm still out there knocking. I wish somebody would answer. Jesus sharing is sitting at he's sitting at the door of many churches. He's sitting out there, new prospect saying, somebody let me in. Pete, let him in back there. He said, I want to come in. He said, I'm not came. Let me in. Listen to what he says, y'all. He said, if you hear my voice, I'll come in. And I eat with you. He said, I'll come in and I'll sup with you. Saints, when you put Jesus outside of your door of heart, listen, he's always saying to the church, I'm standing at the door. I, I wanted to spit you out my mouth, but I'm standing at the door. I wanted to dispose of you and get rid of you, but I'm standing at the door. And he says, if you hear my voice, church, if you open the door, he says, I come in and sup with you. He said, I come in and fellowship with you. I wish many of our churches would open up the doors, deep. So Jesus and the Spirit of Christ can come in. I wish many believers would open their door of their hearts back up and let Jesus come back in. But look what he says, y'all. Verse 21, he says, to the one who conquers. <laughs> he says, to the one who believes. He says, I give you a place. I was about to spit you out my mouth, but now I'm going to give you a place. I was sick on my stomach with you, but now I want to give you a place. 
I want to give you a place somewhere around my throne. And I'm trying to tell somebody, if you just get back to believing, if you believe in the Christ who walks among the seven lampstands, if you believe in the Christ who was the first and the last, if you believe in the one who was dead, but he is now alive, sitting at the right hand of the Father, if you just believe in the Christ who has the keys of death and hell, if you just believe in the Christ who has set before you an open door, he sent me by to tell somebody, you made me sick, but I'm giving you another chance. I stopped by to tell you.